Okay, it is now 5.30. I'd like to call this Board of Selectmen special meeting to order for June 30th at 5.30 p.m. Now that we're called to order, I'd ask you to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, if I can get that up there. There we go. Zoom, share. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, United of, America States of America and to the republic, and which, to is the stands, republic one nation, which is one nation under God, nation, indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty justice, for all. justice for all. Okay, we'll go through roll call. Kevin Cunningham. Art Cagney. Becky Hewitt. And Kathy is absent at this time. Item C, approved minutes from June 8th, 2020. Make a motion that we accept the minutes from June 8th, 2020. All second. All in favor say aye. 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 Public comment. All right. Hearing none, we go into item E1, which is consider an act on awarding the bid uh, for work on upgrading the jail cells at the Plainfield Police Department. What you will notice in that packet that you have is the invitation to bid, which we used a uh, uh, Jakunski Homes Architects to uh, put those put the information out there for specs. Um, I think that actually worked very well. And um, I'll tell you why in a minute, because uh, if you go through the packet, you'll also notice that we had two companies that came in for bid. Mm -hmm. We'd st we started the bid at two o'clock. Uh, there were only two companies that came in, Diversity Construction LLC. Their, their bid for the opening was 224400 And then there was Mattern Construction for 192808.09. So we told them that we would have a uh, discussion and a vote on this at this meeting. And that's what we're about to do. In your packet, you will notice each of the two uh, bids that are in front of you. So they're in, in printed format. Um, just to do some background, we wanted to make sure everything was okay. As this is a construction bid, um, it also has a bid bond that was verified by the company that we hired as our um, uh, to do our detention cell specs. So JHA did the verification for the bid bond and it was valid. So I wanted to mention that right off the bat. Um, the other thing was I wanted to find out a little, do a little more background and history on each of the companies. I will, will tell you that um, I was really wanting, I really wanted to find out more about uh, uh, mostly the low bidder. If we were go were to go forward with a low bid, done the work with the Department of Corrections for the Corrigan uh, bathroom renovations. Um, that was done in 2012. Also in 2012, they did the shower renovations for Corrigan. And in 2018, they've done Department of Corrections, your correctional dorm and, dorm and bathroom renovations. So they have worked with uh, larger uh, projects for the state of Connecticut. Um, so they have a background and a, uh, a good one with that. Um, so the questions that would be right now that I, I thought of were, well, how do we actually go ahead get in, and um, we estimated it a little um, low for the actual bid. We thought it originally it might have been around 150. Um, obviously, the lowest bid here came in at 192 plus. Um, so what we wanted to do, so you can feel a little bit more comfortable about when we go forward with this, if we were to go forward with it, would be to say, well, how do you get the line item transfers to cover all of the monies? Uh, the police chief uh, and Mario, I believe, also worked with this as well uh, to work on it, where they can actually extract monies from to help in that line item transfer, as well as the town. So there, you should have in your packet on uh, dated June 26th, a letter from the police chief talking about $100,000 from police salaries, $30,000 from overtime, $2,500 from holiday pay, $4,000 from uniform, $2,000 from training. They would be able to come forth with $138,500 towards the project. Um, the town realized that we were in uh, you know, need to be, complete the projects and uh, I asked Kelly to look up where we might be able to uh, access more of the monies to offset that. 
Um, we do have some monies available from health insurance still left over. And, um, and so therefore we were able to find 54,309 to complete the total balance for the 192,809. Um, so if we were to go forward with this, we do know we have the money. So I would ask at this time, if you have any questions, Um, I had one question on a bit on Madden's bit bond. Sure. And why it was more than required. I think that's part of what they do for their projects. Um, I, I hear what you're saying, but there's also a construction bond that would be due as well. So this is just the bid bond. Yep. I, I just, yeah, because it was for 12 and it only needed to be 96 or something. Um, right. The other question I had was the chief mentioned but saving money not doing the plumbing fixtures this includes the plumbing fixtures though right right I think this is all inclusive so we're, okay. we're okay in that okay. okay that's the only questions I had on it all right so we don't have to really um, I mean I just wanted you to have the background on where we get the money from so I just wanted you to know mm-hmm all right, so we don't have to make that as part of our motion, but we just have to make sure that we do a, a motion to accept the bid for whichever one we go for. Mm -hmm. I guess I would entertain a motion at this time to accept the um, bid for the cell, uh, jail cell uh, renovations uh, to award that to uh, Mattern, Mattern Construction Inc. for the amount of $192,000. 192.808.09 to Mattern. I, I will make that motion. You'll make that motion. I'll second that. Any other discussion at this time? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. I, I have aye. one question. I, I no. did notice, and I don't, know, I don't know if Mario can answer this, or, or you can, why Mattern said 120 days and the other one was... I, I guess everybody has a different way of doing it, really. Okay. It, yeah. Just a different, okay. I mean, just yeah, like I mean, in your line of work, you might be able to say you could do it at a certain time and, you know, based on what your, your feeling is. So, Mario, you're here. You're online. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh. Perfect. Uh, yeah, it, it's just uh, the company itself. That's just what they use. And it's going to be a while for them for, for mm -hmm. them to actually get the doors in. So, that's just a timeline they use. The other company just went a little above and beyond. Um, but that's uh, definitely right on track, and especially according to uh, Jay Toombs, uh, it definitely is, is the right amount of time. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And that's the two of us, so we'll go forward. Item number two. Consider an act on awarding the bid to herbicide treatment uh, for the Moosa Pond herbicide uh, issues. Um, I received that today at two o'clock, we had a single bidder. Mm -hmm. So they came in at two o'clock and the name of the company is Solitude Lake Management. Uh, they came forward and presented us with, and it is in your packet. Unfortunately, it was after you were here. So no, I had an email to me anyway. Oh, excellent. Excellent. So you see the numbers there is, um, 29, eight, 35. Yeah, and I think that is a little lower than what they you know, thought originally from the uh, Musa pa uh, Lake Association, so Musa Pond Association, sorry. That, um, so that was not too bad. So we've worked with the attorney to make sure that we can process this between the monies that they would be donating in, and we would uh, put our monies together and send it a check to them if we so desire to accept that bid and move forward with the herbicide treatment. Okay. Um, I have so many questions on this, Kevin. Yep. It's, for one, we put this in the budget for 2021. Correct. 17,000. No, 20,000. 20,000. So we're like 10,000 over that. And this was done in 2016. And Solitude Lake Management was, they bid 14000 then, mm -hmm. four years ago. I, I just, there's so many questions. 
I did some research on this this weekend, and the best time to do this treatment seems to be in the spring, not summertime. So I don't know why we're going for summertime. Because I asked them about that and told them what our timeline is for when we get the monies available, and that's they said they would still be able to do this. If we were to vote on this and then tomorrow uh, contract with them, they could actually do it sometime this week. And we need a per permit through the state. Who's doing that? The company? The company would be responsible for doing all of that. And that takes six weeks to get the permit from the state. I researched this, Kevin. This is like, I'm, I'm just not comfortable jumping into it right now, I guess. There's, there's so many questions. What kind of herbicide are they using? Do you know that? No, I don't. Okay. It, it, last time, four years ago, the association kicked in for $5,000. Are mm -hmm. they willing to kick in any? Yeah, they're doing 13000 well, actually 14000 up to fourteen. Okay. So what I wrote, read about it, in the, in the summertime, the pH levels are different, the oxygen levels are different, and it kills more than just milfoil when they do these herbicide treatments. Do you know anything about that? No. Because we don't want to kill other stuff. They say springtime's best because they can target just the milfoil. The other plants that the fish need. And then the other question I would have is, how much milfoil is actually there? How much do they? Their bid, because on the uh, RFP was for the whole pond, ninety-five over ninety-five acres. Are they giving us a bid for ninety-five acres of treatment, or are they spot treating? You see why I have so many questions, Kevin? This is, you know, this is a pesticide going on on a pond that a lot of people use. And they've done it in the past, right? I, yep. Yep, three times from 2009. I, I haven't found the second one yet, but it's probably 13 or 14. And then they did it again in 2016. So the bid last time, was like 12,000 for the whole thing in 2016. And now it, we're up to 30,000. From what I've seen of the pond, I was down there yesterday. Mm -hmm. I, in the beach area, I don't see any milfoil. I think I talked to somebody, evidently most of it's on the back side of the pond. I don't know how much, how many acres do we, can we treat it, you know, two, three acres at a time less impact on the fish, less impact on the vegetation. If you're asking questions I can't give answers to, I don't know. Well, this is why I don't want to jump into it. It's just too many questions for me. Well, let me ask you a question. Yeah. If we were to pass this pending doing it next spring instead, yeah. would that be better? Yeah, because then we could talk to the company and find and do it right. I've seen milfoil. I've seen it over 20 years ago up in New Hampshire. And when it's bad, it's bad. And I don't see that on Moosa Pond. And I know a lot of people like to fish there because it's it's a good pond for fish. Right. Because I fish of the there. Vegetation. You take away vegetation, the fish aren't. I fish there. Do you? Yeah. Okay, it's, so you know. it's becoming very invasive and it continues to crawl from the back to the front. Okay. Well, okay. Now, I, I can tell you this much from my research also. You can do an application in the fall. The spring is best, but either fall, late fall, early spring. It's less impact on the other, on, on the other wildlife in the pond. Okay. So. Would, would it be best then to just say we can approve it, and then we would talk to them on, on the time management yeah also I'd like to know what, what herbicide they're using 
because some are more toxic than okay. others. Well, if you got the packet in front of you, you'll see they used a uh, Procellicor. It's under Schedule A, the treatment services, Lake Aquatic Reed Control. Reed control. I don't have anything about it. Um, two, three, four, page five. It says Schedule A treatment services, and they would do the permitting. Page five oh. Of that packet? Yeah, I don't have a packet. All I have is a request for, for proposal. That's why I was saying I, I got this at two o'clock after you had left, so this this whole packet is in, in your binder. Oh, yeah. there's more there. Mm. Yep. So the name of the name of this aquatic herbicide is called Procellicor. Not one I researched, of course. And the first one of their tax, by the way, is going to the state DEP to get their permits. Say that again. The first task is getting permitting. Second right, right. task is talking about the weed control and the, and the chemical they use. Procellicor. Sure, they, have, they have to come out twice. I, I looked at Deep's requirements for the permit. They come out twice, and then the third like three weeks after that, they'll either approve or deny. So it takes about six weeks anyway to get the permit, so. Well, that would fall right into the fall area. Yeah, I don't think a fall treatment's bad then. Um, yeah, because I'd like to know what this herbicide is, if it, how it works, if it works on contact, uh, systemic. Systemic seems to be the best, it kills the roots. So, and if we can find that out too. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, as, as long as we can have a discussion with this, with the bidder, I have no problem in moving forward with it. Okay. Actually, what I could do is that if we if we would go with this company oh. and just do the contract, we could talk to them about when we could do the application, and I would have them work with you on either a phone call or a Zoom meeting so you can ask their questions. Okay, so with that, would we like uh, to... Um, I'll, make, I'll make a motion that we accept the bid from Solitude Lake Management, $29,835. I will second that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 And I will call them tomorrow to walk through with a step-by-step what we have to do. And I'll ask them to give you a call. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next up on the agenda is item three, consider an act on awarding uh, repair work for the highway truck department. You'll see that there was discussion earlier this year where I was uh, working with the highway department. They showed me one of the trucks. It was a dumper and they lifted up the back so I could see the rails and the rails had pretty much rotted away. It's a good vehicle. It's just that that frame portion has been rotted. So, I'd like to get extended use out of that vehicle and continue on with it. I think the best way to approach this would be to replace the uh, frame and the rail in the back. And in order to do that, I wanted to go out and get a couple of bids from different companies on how to do that. What you see in your packet is that there are two companies that came through with um, what they consider their best estimate of cost. Mm -hmm. And one is basically half of the cost of the other one. Yep. And it is local. And I guess from that, I'd like to move forward with it if it's, uh, unless there's any other discussion. And we do have the money, in, we do have the money available for it, so. Yep. Oh. No discussion. Okay. So, this time, entertain motion to accept the uh, offer from Jolly uh, Jolly John's truck equipment for fifteen thousand dollars to repair our um, frame rail on one of the rotted uh, uh, town trucks. And I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All righty. So the next piece up is. Um, Item four, consider an act on upgrade to a new town website. Uh, there are a couple of companies I've been talking to about how do we upgrade from what we have right now. And 
there's a couple of pieces that go along with that. So for the public information basically is anybody that goes onto the town website, it's, it's older, it's antiquated. Um, it needs to have a better interaction for the public. It's not an easy drive down the lane, so to speak, to get to certain things. Um, interaction is very minimal and um, it doesn't, it doesn't have that professional look as other towns do. So I've been working with a couple of different companies to see what they have available. Um, I, I, I really believe that, oh, by the way, that the, the, we, for the paying for this also, we, we are not taking tax dollars. Again, it comes from one of the, uh, one of the uh, Kelly, you're on right now? Yeah, the low SIP. Low SIP Local fund. capital improvements. Yep. Uh, which is one of their items that they allow. And um, I think for the dollar, uh, these, this is one of the uh, better options that we would have. I've been working with the gentleman, uh, the, by the way, there's two companies that are available. You see in your packet there probably two. The first one is a, a single page for final site. And the other one is a company called Revise. I've been working with them on how we put together a, a website. And this is just the first stage of it basically is um, I'd like to do a, um, a work with this particular company. And I can show you the different websites that they have and worked with already. But I think it is definitely an upgrade to what we have right now. Uh, the price is a little, there's been a little change because he's still trying to, this gentleman is still trying to um, give us a better deal every day. So you'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll notice it's um, right now where it has a um, phase six, the sitemap development and contingency uh, uh, content migration. Um, he has content migration available for us. Instead of the 1700, he, he wants to give it to us for 1515. And if you notice for the public who doesn't have access to read what we're looking at right now, it is basically an entire package of what is available to us for the town of Plainfield. Uh, the grand total, it, it's two phases, I'll give it like this. The grand total for this year is $9,515. And that's well within the boundaries of LOSIP for this. Yeah. I think we have up to what, 20,000 if we wanted to? Yep. And annually what they would do would be they charging us to help for service fees for upgrading and keeping up upkeep and so also support. And there's also a training in the first year to help us out with the people who are utilizing it and, and training on how we can, you know how, um, Kyle takes care of things on a daily basis where we say to him, hey, Kyle, um, can we put this up there on the front page because it's an important issue? He can pop that up in a few minutes based on the, his knowledge of the software he uses. Well, we'll get training on this with five people. We're allowed up to five people to actually get training on this. So we have people who are available to do the same thing. Thank so um, with, with that, I think that, you know, this is actually a very good deal because I went out to other companies I can tell you right now that the other companies I went to, the first two that I went to, uh, they were talking thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars just to roll it over. Hmm. And this company, the other company that you see in the packet, was final site. Yeah. 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 You see how it's fifteen for the setup and ten thousand for the annual. Right. That that's pretty pretty big that's, jump. Yeah, that is. And I think yeah. so. The, the, this one here, this yeah. one's ninety-five fifteen. That's or you have a yearly fee? Nope, the yearly fee is 2000 Okay. Yeah, it sounds a lot more reasonable than the other one. Yep. I'd also like to have input, not only from the town hall employees, but also from the public on what they'd like to have seen, you know, what they'd like to see from their town website. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to, you know, talk, talk to a few people and see if they would help out a little bit with, um, you know, giving us some insight of what they, what they want. Uh, the, the most important page, obviously, is the front page and how it looks and how interactive it is. But you know, after that is is other things that we could be putting in there. Um, and I'll, I'll you know I'll talk further on that in upcoming um, meetings, seeing if the people might be interested in helping out. First, Lockman, I don't mean to interrupt, but can I ask a question on that? Uh, sure. Uh, is that something that possibly the uh, police can be a part of rather Absolutely. than two separate sites? Um. Yeah, because we can we can do like right now. You notice that there is a link to um, the board of education. We could do the same thing with police. But I, um, uh, Mario, I, if you want, I can actually show you the sites, show you how it's navigated, 
and uh, I'd love to have your input on it so we can, you know, work with everybody to, uh, to make this something that, you know, we can all work with. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. And just like that, someone's volunteering. But in order to get to the next step, we'd have to obviously approve this. Um, and again, it's not directly tax dollars. It's coming out of low SIP. So you have any questions or concerns? No. All right. So I guess we would entertain a motion to approve the uh, me to sign off with uh, revised web services for a sales agreement uh, for for the amount of nine thousand five hundred fifteen dollars. So moved. I will second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, item number five: discuss line scraping for the town roads, which was already done, but I wanted to make sure that everybody understood what happened. You'll notice that there's a couple of bids that were put up there or, or estimates, I should say, from different companies from the highway department. So uh, we were trying to uh, be very efficient with our monies and therefore he already did it. He already took care of that. So that is a, uh, a completed task as far as purchase of the, um, from highway safety. So they right. just did it out of their, out of their budget. They're done. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the next one is item six. Um, item six says discuss new time card system. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see in your packet a company called Time Pilot. Wow. I was work, working with multiple companies to see what we could do to upgrade. Um, it's not that we're bad. It's just that if you everybody, everybody thinks of the word, uh, you've got to punch in and punch out with your time card. It's just that you have a time card and you go to the mach old machine and you punch it and it comes up with a, a clock de designation print on your card. Those eventually at the end of the week would go to our payroll department. They would verify everything looks good. Sometimes it's handwritten on there what the times are in and out. So it takes a little while to go through all of those. Not only that, but then you have to save all the cards. Uh, this is a different type of system where you have just a little tiny thing about the size of your key because it fits on your, on your keychain and it's just a fob key, and you would go up to the machine, and you would uh, click on it, and um, it automatically takes record of your time in and time out, or breaks, anything like that. At each of the places I'd like to place this at, you would have someone who's in control of it who would say, okay, if, or if you called out sick today, I would be the manager of that department, I'd go in there and I'd key in your code and say you're out sick, or whatever it might be. And so here's the great part about Two great parts about it. Number one, this particular system at all five of these sites that I'd like to put it at, one push of a button and it sends all those files to the payroll department. Second part of that is the payroll department can then visually see what's going on. I have a question, call back the manager, fix it and be done. The third part about that is once it's verified, you hit a button, it sends it off to the payroll services and that's it. No more cards, no more records like that. Everything's automated. Saves tons of time before going through every time card. So uh, I think you see the price there was two thousand and three dollars for this yeah. company. I think that's very time efficient. It saves money as well. I'd like to know, um, you know your thoughts on this. Okay. First off, you said five sites. This is the Vet Vetro power supply and USB. I'm sorry, what? Oh, power. Yeah, those are the that's the actual system. Okay, it says quantity four. Oh, there's a main one that stays here. Say the first one, the very first one. The first one. Okay. Yeah, Vetro time clock. Yep. Okay. Is there uh, is there an annual fee for this? Nope. Okay, it's all internal. Okay. I don't have any questions other than that. Okay. I think it's a good idea. Yep. Definitely. Come up to the 21st century. That would be nice. <laughs> and, and it would definitely does save time and resources with our, um, you know, apparel department. So. Oh. All right. So I'll go on to the next one. Consider an act. Consider an act on line item number seven for transfers. 
Oh. Okay. Consider an act on the line item transfers for 19 and 20. You will have in your packet probably a large list of line item transfers. Um, you did not get the most updated one. As I said, things were flying and happening at all day long here. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure that you knew what was going on. But um, I think the only thing that you didn't get in your particular packet was, is what's the third one down? It says recreational vehicle. Yeah. How much is it? Thousand. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> we had a little issue with our. Um, the senior van. Yeah, the senior van yeah. without the AC. Yeah. So that that um, uh, pending bill came in, and that's why the difference in the change is really going to be three thousand two hundred seventy-one dollars and twenty-one cents. We're going to round that up to the whole number, correct? Yeah. Yeah. No twenty-one cents. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we can go through them quickly and explain what they are. We'll do the same thing with the Board of Finance, not this coming meeting tonight, but actually in a future meeting because they didn't put this part of it on their agenda. But for buildings and grounds, we've purchased items and they came over under COVID purchases. Highway overtime was mainly because of when we did all our roads, uh, they had to stay late because the contractor that we had to do the paving was trying to get them all done in a certain time and they were late. That's why. The numbers, we're gonna talk about that next year when we do that, not to have that happen. But um, paving of the roads cost a lot of that overtime. Hate that, that's why it was overrun. Um, and we have that vehicle expense that I just mentioned. That's 32.72, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. 272 even, got yep. it. Okay. Uh, rec supplies, we've had a couple of purchases there. I think we had the, um, Oh, uh, different uh, art supplies. They were planning on having things done, but it, unfortunately with COVID, it hasn't come to, come to fruition. We're also talking about uh, some, um, uh, God, my mind has gone blank for a second. Uh, the purchase of some of the, uh, what was that stuff they put outside? Uh, I had it in the paper here in front of me somewhere. Uh, shavings uh, for outside. For the playground wood area. Wood chips? The wood chip mulch, yeah, that's it. So that brings that up, thank you. Uh, that brings up that item. Um, pool operations, you notice there's $1,000 there for purchases. That was the backup. Um, remember we talked about this during the budget season? The backup, the backup UV light. Uh, so in the previous year, the telephone budget was lowered a little. That's why that number needed to be adjusted. Uh, postage, um, there's been a lot of things going on with COVID-19, mailings out versus people coming in and getting certain applications. So we mail things out. That's why the numbers jumped up there. Uh, and we got to talk about how next in next year's budget after this, we talk about how we actually um, split out the purchases for paper purchases, because that's why that number was up higher in one area than another. Um, I, we do have to do a, a transfer to contingency because we have the person, Martin Brogy, who is working with us on uh, the highway departments, environmental issues. And so that really isn't classified as legal. It, it, it's not a legal expense, it's just his payment for his services. Uh, the last of the computer overtime is in there. You've got council of governments because there's been a lot more tra travel to the hospitals as transfers. And then there's obviously the number that just below that that talks directly about um, working to get all the cells taken care of. And that is all the trial and transfers between the departments, between the town and also the uh, police department. And where are we taking it from? Uh, between the transfers from the police we spoke of earlier and the health insurance. Health insurance, we had enough in there to cover that. So while we're not talking about the full amount on the next meeting for the Board of Finance, we are talking about this if we were to make a motion to approve and go forward we would be talking about how uh, they can actually do something about the other section of this at a meeting in early July. So the request would be at this time for, are we rounding that up? Yes, please. Okay, 244,000, $241. Okay. To be appropriated for transfer to cover the shortages. Say again, 244 what? 
Two, uh, two, four, four, three, three, one. Okay. Is that going to change the health insurance number? It'll reduce it. I have leftover funds in that account, so we'll use those funds to cover these expenditures. Well, I'm just talking about the extra for the uh, air conditioning for the rec vehicle. Because it usually balances out, otherwise, yeah, they, yeah the, 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 that up. the sheet you have doesn't have it in there, but the sheet that I have does. So, okay. yeah, so she's got it appropriately in there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's the bottom line, anyway. Yep. Okay. So, we need a motion to approve $244,331 to be blended and transferred to balance for both the end of year budget for the town and also for the jail cell request. I'm making this motion to, to pass this on to the Board of Finance. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll make that motion. I will second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. And we have one final thing in this group, which is item number eight, consider an act on tax refund for the tax collector as follows. VW Credit Leasing LTD for $102.84. I'll make a motion that we approve the tax credit for $102.84 to VW Credit Leasing. And I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 And motion passed. Item last item that you have up there is actually just a correspondence just so the public knows that there's we're always looking for different boards and commissions but we're also looking for uh, things that we don't think about Connecticut water um, asking for appointment for representative for the Connecticut waters newly formed customer advisory council so if there's anybody out there who's interested you can give me a call I'll forward the email over to you so you can get more detail and also be able to contact mr. Dan Meany uh, who is the Director of Public Affairs for Connecticut Water to find out what this entails to see if you would be interested in serving. I would ask if there's any other info or any other correspondence for tonight. Okay. Hearing none, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we are now adjourned at 6.07 and we will join in a few minutes for the water, or immediately for the Water Pollution Control Authority. I'll set that right up. Thank you very much. Thanks. So at this time, I would call at 6.19 p.m. You know, it could be Jay on the iPhone trying to connect too. I'll get him on, on mute. So I'm gonna call the Water Pollution Control Authority meet special meeting to order uh, for June 30th. And we'll do a call to order and roll call. All right, Cagney. And Kevin Cunningham, I did get an email from Kathy that she is unavailable for tonight, so excused. Uh, do we have a uh, time to read through the uh, minutes from June 8th, 2020 for Water Pollution Control Authority? Yes, motion. Make a motion we accept the minutes from June 8th, 2020 meeting. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Public comment? Any public comment at this time? Hearing none, going into E1, which is consider an act on line item transfers for 19 and 20. You have in your packet, uh, should have a packet with a grand total of $27,450. Uh, you'll see is where the line item is coming from. Uh, you have do have monies available from electricity and the amounts are listed underneath as to what happened in each area. They were short staffed and um, if you wanted to Add anything more to this, Stephanie, because you are the spokesperson for tonight. But uh, uh, they were short staffed. Is that just basically uh, throughout the COVID 19, making sure you had staffing? COVID 19, and then the old supervisor passed uh, in 2019. So we had to make up for that as well. Okay. Understood. How about the next one down when it says COVID update SDS sheets? Uh, so that's under office supplies. So I updated the safety data sheet. So I had to print out a lot of papers and buy a lot of binders that generally doesn't happen every year. But so I don't anticipate going over again next year. All right. So you're advertising job openings. I know we have multiple job openings we'd like to fill. So yep. we 
advertising throughout the year, and I believe we'll be doing some more soon. Yep, the reason we went over is just because the position never got filled, so we had to keep re-advertising. Yep. Uh, and the next one is painting, $5,100 for painting. Is this like a Monet or is this a nothing you're going to be hanging on the wall? Yeah, nothing hanging on the wall. Just, you know, a couple, a couple new built, like part of a new building got built and that needed to be uh, painted and primed. And then we just got a little behind. So we wanted to start catching up on the painting. So we just did buy a lot in paint supplies that generally didn't happen the years prior. Okay. And the next one you have to give a little more detail to is this unexpected expenses for 11000 uh, Operations and supplies. So that's pretty much just unexpected breakdowns. Uh, for example, uh, probably about six months ago, part of the centrifuge broke the touchscreen PLC panel. And just to get a new touchscreen PLC panel to run it was $5,000 right off the get code. That was an anticipated, unanticipated expense. Right. And like I was mentioning to people that things change on a daily basis. If we had, if Stephanie had been able to call me earlier in the morning with the other issue that happened today, we would add that line item in there as well, because there was something else that broke today. So, yep. Um, but uh, the last one says equipment replacement, $5,900. And that's for some pump uh, replacement items there. So, Yep, E1s, we kind of replace them as they break down for the pumps around Moose Pond. So the homeowners will call us when their alarm goes off and their pump fails, and we can never anticipate how many are going to break down each year. So we kind of just buy three at a time as needed, and they're about $2,000 a pump. And I think we were down to our last one towards – the beginning of this month, so we bought. We usually buy three at a time to keep two, two, three in stock. Got it. So that's usually what that's for. Okay, so coming up, like this is for line item transfers over to those shortages for the amount of twenty-seven thousand four hundred and fifty dollars. Do we have any questions? Is, is is it all coming from electric because of the solar panels? Do you, do you are you no. over on electric? Are you bit doing good on electric because of the solar panels? That's what would be my estimated guess. I know the solar panels didn't get actually turned on and activated till I think the end of November. So they've only been active for about six months, but that's what I would guess is where the savings and the electricity is coming from. Okay. Um, in particular are actually the ones that are in the array on the, on the, um, on the ground, right? That's, yeah. This is why I'm asking. I'm wondering if they just work better. Yeah, but it hasn't been a whole year yet, so yeah. it's hard to anticipate how much is actually coming from the solar panels yet. Mm -hmm. you, I, I think you're the only one that's showing an increase, though, on electric this year. Like a savings? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh. I, we had that renovation, too, in WPCA, so a lot of their equipment was upgraded, so I'm sure that's beneficial to them, too, plus yeah, the solar panels. Kind of yeah. well. Yeah. Any other questions? So um, we entertain a motion at this time to accept the line item transfers uh, from electricity to the different areas of for shortages for the amount of $27,450. I'll make that motion. Uh, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number two on the agenda would be, back up a sec. We have been working with the union to um, support uh, contracted increases in certain areas of that uh, union. We want to make sure that we are proactive about keeping our water pollution control authority. And by doing so, um, we've been working with them to try to come up with something which is a reasonable, uh, feasible increases. And uh, at this point, uh, we have an, um, um, which is a memorandum of agreement for the union to uh, do license in increases uh, using an appendix. Or if you know, if you have both of those papers, there is an appendix also that talks about the increases. Yeah, I don't have either. Year. Okay. It talks about the increases this year and also um, that's to keep people in alignment with uh, what we see is around us for um, actually still lower, believe it or not, uh, from the air, uh, water pollution control authorities around us. And also the uh, contracted increase, which is a regular increase for next year. So we've been working with the union and its representation to see if we can come up with something feasible. And uh, I don't 
see this as an issue. Um, what I'd like to do though is the increase really brings us, and in, in we talked about this before, how we're going to have to, you know, come up to the up to the plate with something to keep our pollution already going without having to privatize, and that's the the main issue here. Um, so with that, I would ask, um, and I know you don't have the papers in front of you, Art. I, I know that we're, we're putting these things together at the last minute. Um, but um, if you have any questions, though, that would be appropriate at this time to ask both some, it's myself and Becky, we can do that with also uh, with Kelly here. Mm -hmm. seeing, I don't really have any questions. I, I know right. there's a need. Yep. I do know that. And by the way, it's all in alignment with what we put out there for our budget, our budget we already set. Mm -hmm. This goes directly in alignment to that. We anticipated what the increases would be. Okay. Stephanie's good with this? Yep, I am good with this. Okay. okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the motion so that we can get it on, on the record. Um, what I would do is uh, I would make the motion to... Um, for the um, town of Plainfield with myself as the uh, representation, Kevin Cunningham, first selectman, to agree to a mem uh, memorandum of agreement with a pay scale increase um, that is pending the um, ratification of the union. So that would be the motion. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any other discussion? other than we look forward to working with Stephanie and the union to see if we can get this completed. And we'll be talking about this in the future. So again, thank you. And um, with that, we'll we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion has passed. So with that, we don't have anything else on our agenda. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I will second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much.